electric hefty update. I'm not sure what chapter this is, but I've decided that the hefty is going to get a new moniker. It's going to become a hefty E. So in the various bits of touch up painting, I erase the G and then we'll have to make a stencil and put an E on. Big news is that I did a bunch of painting and finally got the battery assembled. So the battery modules are all wired up in parallel, assembled in blocks, one upper layer and one bottom layer, and they're in the case, and the case is on the tractor. So the batteries are, this is the top layer obviously, and the, the main power connections, these are obviously insulated and waiting. So two of those run down to the bottom layer, negative ends, and two of them are negative off the top layer. Similarly for the positives, so that all the, the power load is all coming through those eight cables, which will be coupled and fused, and then they will run out through these guys here and some big, uh, I have some triple zero for that. The other connections here on the outside of the box are a charge port and XT90 for plugging in a balance charger when we want to. And so this one is a, a lot of pins. I think it's a 16 pin connector. I, I needed 13 for the balance charger. And the other one is, next one is four pins. And I think that is supplying 12 volt DC to run the cooling fan circuit on a thermostat. And also, uh, I think sending a signal to, yeah, it's the on off signal for the balancer, the cell balancer that's going to live in here. So I still need to make a strip across the top probably put some foam under it to isolate it and uh, then mount the balancers and the thermostat and some fuses and a terminal strip and the remaining bits in here and then tie together the power cabling. But all things considered, I find it's looking pretty good. And if I remove the wooden prop, and make sure the power cables sit flat. Should be able to. Stand back and admire a pretty decent looking battery case. And the, the frame that it sits on that helps it to sit just above the motor pretty dark under here but you can see that it clears the motor okay and you see that the underside of the battery case is perforated and uh, that allows it to pull air in the bottom and the shelf that separates the two layers or that hangs the second layer above the first one so the first one ends and then has a bit of headroom so there's no risk of shorts and then there's a rigid shelf with another perforated uh, section so that airflow can go right up through and out through the uh, through those guys as needed. Uh, I added an accessory outlet here, a smaller SB that will um, was rated for 175 amps I think and uh, it'll get a smaller contactor and it'll be there should we ever either find a a good big um, goodness what are those called uh, inverter to drive um, AC loads so it'll it'll be a basically like a high current 40 volt auxiliary outlet that we can uh, switch on and off from up among the controls and not a lot has happened in the uh, control box I think it still has uh, just a couple things installed in it. The front uh, sheet will get all cut up and have 
a bunch of relays and indicator lamps and various and sundry other bits attached to it. And then in the lower level, we have, uh, this is just all of the signals that will go to the main controller that controls the drive motor. And then down here, uh, power in from the battery will come in either down here or maybe on this side. So this SB connector, which is a big one, those two cables will run down and then into this enclosure and negative will feed right into this current shunt and by, let me see if I can get this. Oh, I can't remember how this amp seal connector gets out, but the, the current shunt that you can see behind all that wiring mess, it then feeds in through a twisted copper bus bar into the main contactor, and when the main contactor is closed, it feeds right back to the uh, controller there. And so that's the negative feed from the battery. Positive will come in to, I think this one's the positive um, on the controller. Almost visible. I can't see from here. All anyway, right, the current shunt will measure the, um, it'll attempt to measure current flow instantaneously. And then there's a device that lives up in the dash that tries to integrate that with respect to time and calculate how much current we've pulled out of the battery and thus give us an idea of battery state of charge because these lithium cells are the uh, they're lithium iron phosphate cells and they have a r really flat discharge curve and so looking at voltage is pretty much useless as a approximation of state of charge so you need something else otherwise dash is uh, still as it was I think in the last update I haven't gotten to wiring it the missing piece down there I think is over there on the table uh, and chargers over there and some other heavy cabling bits and so here back in the dash these two displays are the read out from the cell balancer that lives back in the battery case and then and it tries to balance all of the 12 cells and then this is the output from the state of char the display from the state of charge estimation tool and counter so if all goes well the hefty e will be wired up and operational in uh, just a couple short weeks. Yeah, yeah, I think a week or two might be working. And then we gotta get the tools hooked up so that it can actually do some useful work because it's just about time. It's April 20 something and uh, spring's coming. All right, thanks for watching.